I'm gonna tell you right now, this is one place that blew me out of the water. I was not expecting much when I got here, and what I've seen is unbelievable. I can't believe they're gonna let me drive one of these big boys out of here. All right, let's fire it up. trucks. say it too many times this place is huge on this episode of the Arizona timeless tours I'm at the Hall of Flame Museum of firefighting stay tuned this place is unbelievable absolutely fantastic blew my mind when I walked in and the staff here is unbelievable also I'm not gonna talk much on this video because some of the staff members give us a brief tour of three of these awesome fire trucks stay tuned you don't want to miss this all right let's try to back this baby up out of here <laughs> Mark Moorhead, I'm the Curator of Education here at the Hall of Flame Museum. We'd really love for you to come on down and visit our collection of uh, antique firefighting apparatus from all over the world. Probably my favorite piece in the whole museum is this hand pumper from 1844. It was built in the great city of Philadelphia and it was built for the great city of Pawtucket, Rhode Island and they had it for a long time and this was uh, probably the state of the art in the hand pumpers and the hand pumpers were pretty much the state of the art in firefighting apparatus for about 200 years. The way this one worked, it's very elaborate looking. These V-shaped wooden things that you see, they are the handles. They're folded up now. This is how it would have sat in the fire station. When you pull it, the crew pulls it by hand to the fire. When they get it there, they fold the handles down, they lay out flat, they drop in here, tighten them up, and then you fold these platforms down as well, and they lay out flat. And you got a crew of 12 guys up on the platform, 13 guys down on the ground, working the two sets of pump handles. Now, as it's going up and down, I want to show you the action on it. It goes up and down like this. You have to imagine the handles folded down. Now I can move it because there's no water going through it. If there was water going through it, I would need that crew of 50 guys. Like I said, 12 up on the platform, 13 down on the ground, same on this side, so 25 guys each side. Trouble is, after about 15, 20 minutes, these guys are so tired they can barely lift their arms over their head, so ideally, you needed another set of 25 guys each side to spell them out, give them a little break. On the other side, a hose would go out to your water source, probably a portable wooden fire hydrant you brought with you. And on this side would be your play hose or your discharge hose. That's what you point at the fire. With all those hands working, you get about 250 gallons of water a minute.
scroll. Let's go put out that fire. They must have been a lot thinner back then. All right, let's go. So this is another big favorite. Whenever we have the little kids in here, they always say that this looks like what Cinderella went to the ball in. And it kind of does. It's probably the prettiest piece we have here at the museum. The thing that's significant about it, you couldn't fight a fire with this to save your life. This has no actual firefighting function. It's shaped like a hose carriage, but there's no place to really put a hose on it. This is a parade carriage. And in some small town and even some rural uh, volunteer fire brigades. This was a very important piece because this was the piece that you put in your parade. This was built in 1870 by a carriage maker in New York City called uh, Buckley and Merritt and they built it for the Hotchkiss Fire Department of Derby, Connecticut. That fire department still exists. They were still pulling this in parades into the early 1960s and they have a picture of it now on their patch. The way it works is as the guys pulled it down the street by hand it would turn this wheel, which turns this belt, which turns this inner cylinder. And as you can see, that surface is mirrored. That uh, was because a lot of times in those days, parades would be at night. So you'd have these uh, lanterns with different colored panes of glass. You'd have a flame in there and it would pick up that light and you get all that nice sparkly, twinkly light coming off of that. So it's kind of a 19th century light show. Up top there, the, the kids always giggle at naked guy with grape leaf and wings on his feet. Of course, if you're a Roman, uh, he's Mercury. If you're a Greek, he's Hermes. He's the son of Zeus in Greek mythology. And he was the messenger of the gods. So, so he's the symbol of speed. If you're the messenger of the gods, you gotta be fast, right? Uh, so that was like a lot of things in firefighting. It's kind of a way of bragging. It's saying like, that's how fast we are. It's like we have wings on our feet. That's how, we, that's how fast we get to a fire. And then in the 19th century, everybody had to have a motto. Mottos were a big thing. Up here is this company's motto, to do good is our intent, which is kind of basic, but it's not a bad motto to live by. But with this piece, and very similar to pieces in many, many other fire departments at that time, and even still in, in a different way today, to show off a little bit was their intent. This was the big payoff if you were a small town volunteer firefighter in the 19th century, is you got to pull this down the street wearing your most beautiful outfit with all your buddies and everybody in town would cheer for you and you showed how proud you were to be a firefighter and how proud you were of your community. And a version of this still goes on. If you go to especially smaller town uh, volunteer fire companies, they'll very often have a beautifully restored fire truck, um, similar to the fire trucks we have here at the museum. And that is sort of the equivalent of this. It's their parade piece. It's to be in their parades. It carries, you know, the Cherry Queen and the Cherry Festival or whatever it is. And so these traditions, they sort of carry on in slightly different ways still to this day. gotta come check this place out. It's absolutely amazing. This is what they were fighting fires with in 1915. Check it out. This 
here is a beautiful 1938 American La France fire truck. a 1924 America La France Okay, so among our trucks, we have a lot of beautiful trucks, but this is one that tends to stand out for a lot of our visitors. And one of the obvious reasons is just because it's not the traditional color for an American fire truck, which fire trucks are all different colors. They can be any color that the, the firefighters or the people in the town want them to be. But the big tradition and probably what most of us think of fire trucks being, of course, is red. But this fire truck is white, but it isn't just distinctive because it's this unusual color. This, if you get the old timers in here, they'll sell you, sometimes tell you that this is maybe the finest fire truck ever made. This is like the Rolls Royce of fire trucks. This is the 400 series by American La France. This one was built in 1935 and it's kind of even looks like a Rolls or a Bentley or a Packard or a Duesenberg, you know, one of those old school touring cars. It's got this beautiful front end. There's a V12 engine under there, plus the pump for the water, so it had a lot of weight up front. Even so, this could do about 60 miles an hour. Now, 60 miles an hour may not sound that impressive, but 1935 in a vehicle this big, that was pretty fast. So you could get to a fire very quickly, you had a lot of options for fighting it when you got there, and never to be underestimated with firefighters, you looked good getting there. So, if you had this, like I said, you were the envy of firefighters for 100 miles around. The trouble was, this one was in Johnny Carson's hometown of Norfolk, Nebraska, uh, but they weren't a very common truck, and the reason was it was the middle of the Great Depression. This was 1935, and so nobody could afford these trucks. They were uh, pretty expensive for the time. I believe I, that they were around $13,000, which might as well have been $13 million for all the more most fire companies could afford them in those days. And so they didn't make very many of them. LaFrance made fewer than 200 of these. Most of them went for scrap in World War II. One of the great things that they give you when you check in here is a guide to the exhibits. It's this little, it's a booklet that contains all the information of the fire trucks that you're gonna look at and the exhibit halls. It's an awesome, awesome resource. You need this to get through here. You're Me a favor if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet hit that subscribe button hit that like button and if you leave a comment good or bad I'll try to get right back to you I'm trying I have so much more to tell you about this place so many more pictures to take so much more video to record but the camera is running out of battery the little red bee playing is blinking blink 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 saying your battery is dead